to take a bigger look at the AFC. So the Chiefs begin their quest for their first ever three-peat with the traditional Thursday night opener. That's against the Ravens. It'll be a rematch of last season's AFC title game, which KC won in Baltimore. Two teams hoping to reach that level this year are the Bengals and who we just talked about, the Jets, who welcome back, of course, their franchise quarterbacks and Joe Burrow and Aaron Rodgers, who each suffered season-ending injuries last year. The opening week will also feature plenty of old faces in new places. Saquon Barkley with the Eagles, Stephon Diggs with the Texans, Derrick Henry on the Ravens. The Ravens adding Henry to an already stacked offense that features Zay Flowers, Mark Andrews as Lamar Jackson's primary pass catchers. Isaiah likely also emerged last season as another weapon at tight end. Okay, I wanted to set the table on that, Dan. We'll dive more into the AFC. You can go wherever you want, but I want to start with this. And, Nick, you're up first. Does Henry make Baltimore the best offense in the AFC? I think he does. Uh, uh, what they have added there, they're already a great rushing attack. And if you make the, op the option that defenders have to choose between is let Lamar carry the ball or let Derrick Henry carry the ball, it's kind of a pick your poison situation. And it's not as if they haven't addressed their issues in uh, having more sophisticated offensive uh, attacks, which they did last year, and also still having pass catching options with healthy Mark Andrews uh, returning. And they've gotten better on the edge with receivers. I think this offense is continuing continuing to evolve and was one of the best offenses in football with Mitchell in the backfield when he was healthy. He's coming back, getting healthy also, and you add Derrick Henry to it. It does seem like, at least through the regular season, I would expect Baltimore to have the best offense in the AFC. Hey, Ben. Guys, I, yeah, guys, I'm going to go. I'm going to go with the Buffalo Bills. I know, it, you know, people mm. will be like, well, wait a minute. Stephon Diggs moves over to the, you know, moves, moves on to the Houston Texans, but I, I just have my faith in, in, in Josh Allen being that playmaker that, that he has become. Uh, the fact that, listen, we saw them go through transition last year. You know, in the last, you know, eight games or whatever it was in, in, towards the end of the season last year, where they went away from Stephon Diggs. And this team offensively was, I would say, was even more efficient. They ran through James Cook. We know Dalton Kincaid, their, their first round pick from last year. I think he's going to take on a much bigger role in this offense. You're going to see. This Buffalo Bills often be more of kind of a two tight end, you know, one back offense. I know everyone talks about the receiver and they, they drafted, you know, Kenyon, Cole, Kenyon Coleman. But I think Josh, Josh Allen will get those young, those young wide receivers acclimated and get them up to speed. But I think that the, the combination of the two tight ends, James Cook in the backfield and the playmaking ability of Josh Allen will still sustain and have them at the top of the AFC, in my opinion. It's the Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> I mean, the Kansas City Chiefs last year offensively were poor. And they were poor really for two reasons. One, penalties. Two, drops. And I think the third potential conversation of that would be lack of speed. They added two of the guys that are notorious for speed. I mean, the addition of – obviously still have Kelsey. But Hollywood Brown – and the draft of Xavier Worthy out of Texas, we're talking about a football team that is going to still have one of the best offensive lines of football. Rasheed Rice became one of the better go-to possession receivers in the NFL. And now you have two guys on the outside that bring a vertical element to this offense. Travis Kelsey hasn't had space like this since he was with Tyreek Hill three or four years ago. Patrick is Patrick. I, I don't see – I think this team is going to be better, and I think this will be the best offense in football because of the speed element. I don't think the drops will be an issue. I think that will be something that is obviously a focal point of their offseason. I understand left tackle, they got to get figured out. But the speed thing for me changes so much of what they can do because they can throw the ball downfield then. They're going to take advantage of that space because of throwing the ball downfield with some of their RPO game. Pacheco will be able to run the ball in a dominant offensive line. I'm with you guys. But if we just took the three offensive lines and we said Buffalo's offensive line, Baltimore's offensive line, Kansas City's offensive line, as much as I love Baltimore's offense, I still think that Kansas City has a better offensive line than Baltimore. Nick? 
Yeah, Kansas City, you, you glossed over just for a second there, but Kansas City has an issue at the most important offensive line position. Like they need to figure out what they're going to do at left tackle. They haven't addressed that. Uh, the rest of the offensive line, I think, is, is very good. And I'd be crazy to stand up here and say that, oh, there's no chance that like the Ravens will be decidedly much better than the Chiefs given all the changes yeah. that they made. Like I'm not a lunatic. I know how good Patrick Mahomes is, and I know how scary a speed receiver like Xavier Worthy and um, Hollywood Brown could be in that system. But one thing that we have noticed, like after Tyreek Hill, is they've had a hard time fitting in receivers. I don't know whose fault it is. I don't know why that it's been that way, but they've gone through a lot of receivers and Sky Moore and Juju Smith-Schuster, MVS. Like, none of these guys have seemed to quite figure it out yet. So I, the reason why I lean to the Ravens, it's two kind of proven entities. They're a team that's predicated on being a dominant running attack and then putting you in a compromised situation. And you know what, Derrick Henry, dominant running back. You yeah. put him on that offense, and he hasn't really fallen off. You put him on that offense, and that, to me, uh, is kind of more of a guaranteed thing. And I know as good as Patrick Mahomes is, they weren't good offensively last year. They went on to win the Super Bowl because he's that great. But we're talking about who's going to have the best offense, like who ends the year with the highest offensive uh, EPA. Something like that is something that the Ravens have done routinely with this style of play, with these yeah. uh, particular yeah. players. And Derrick Henry is a special player also that you put into that equation. I think it, it seems more feasible to me that the Ravens end up with the most efficient offense by the end of the year, but it doesn't mean that the Chiefs had no chance. Clearly, the Chiefs would be my second choice if I had to pick one. Yeah, I mean, the Ravens were second in points per game last year. I think they averaged over 28 points per game, and we know Derrick Henry second in rushing. But here's what I want to know. I know we're focusing on the offense then. To your point, Dan, who's the biggest threat to the Chiefs? The biggest threat to the Chiefs is the Cincinnati Bengals if Joe stays healthy. Just because the, the ability to go and kind of do it against Patrick Mahomes. Uh, they're still young on some of their defensive line pieces. So, like, Chris Jenkins Jr., who's their draft pick out of Michigan, has got to play a big part. But I, I still think the Bengals wait and sees. Okay. What kind of Stephon Diggs shows up in Houston is a mm -hmm. big part of that. Like, if, if Steph has, you know, the, the impact that he had, let's call it in 22 and 23 – that offense will be the best in the conference yeah. because him, Nico, Collins, their tight ends, and CJ. And the other team that I would throw, or at least offensively, that can throw it all in a wrinkle is Indy. If Anthony Richardson is what I thought he was coming out of school and he could stay healthy, Indy's offensive line, Shane Steichen as their play caller, Jonathan Taylor at the back, Anthony Richardson, and those two receivers that they have, that offense can be freakishly good like the Eagles were in 2022. That's interesting. Damien, before you take us home here, real quick, when you go back to, um, I'm blanking, what was the team before you? Uh, Houston. Yeah. Do you have any concern, though, because C.J. Stroud really took the league by storm. Do you have any concern that now, okay, they've got a year of tape on him? Absolutely not, because the scheme is something that has been proven for 50 years in this league. Mm. Damien? Yeah, I'm kind of disappointed in Dan O. Not uh, not not coming to his boy Josh Allen here. I I just think that Josh Allen. I I, I look at the Buffalo Bills and the way they're going to run their offense. I think it's going to be it's going to flow more through the two tight ends, and James Cook in the backfield. I think I think Josh Allen this offense is going to have a chance to be even more efficient as an offense, even more efficient. Josh Allen is always one of the top playmakers, but they're going to be even more efficient even without a quote unquote number one wide receiver right out of the gate.